This is exactly right. Magic. Pling. <laughs> Hi. Hello and welcome. This is my favorite murder. The mini sode. It's a mini episode. We read your emails. You fucking clap or roll your eyes. Sometimes you'll laugh. Sometimes you'll go, why do I do this to myself? Sometimes you'll puke, which is a story. You want to get into it? Should I do that one first? Kick it off. I was going to do it last, but let's do it first. That's a nice, you just, you Fuck set it. yourself up with the perfect transition. And I never go first, so I was not expecting this. Yeah. Oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> oh my God, it's so different. <laughs> okay, this is called Your Podcast Makes Me Sick. <laughs> Surprise ending. <laughs> Karen, Georgia, and gang. I love your podcast and everything about you, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> the story takes place a few weeks back. I was still in my heavy binge listening phase, having only discovered the show in April. I hopped in my car to head to the dentist and put on an episode titled Proclensity. Hmm. Yay. Still my favorite word I've yeah. ever made up. Georgia shares about Typhoid Mary, and I'm getting pretty grossed out. As I'm pulling into the parking lot, Karen says, I like to imagine Typhoid Mary sat in seclusion in her room on that island and fantasized about all the different things she'd like to put her hands in. <laughs> Corn chowder, mashed potatoes. <laughs> and the fantasy is both bare arms go up, go all the way in. <laughs> Still love that. It's a great. It's very fun to hear back things we've said yeah. because we've done so much talking. Yeah. It's, and that's a good feeling. Don't remember it. It sounds hilarious. Yeah. And she said, uh, that did me in. I promptly pulled into the nearest space, opened my door, and vomited in the bushes. <laughs> I had driven all the way, though, and had been looking forward to having my teeth clean, so I decided to just brush my teeth in the bathroom and hopefully not throw up anymore. Mm -hmm. As I sat in the waiting room, I began contemplating and decided I should probably ration myself to one episode a day. Four to six is too many. <laughs> the hygienist calls me back, and we exchange nice how-have-you-beens when she pulls out the x-ray vest. That's when it hits me. I gasp. I gasped so loud, the guy in the next room asked what type of work I was having done. <laughs> and then informed the hygienist that I can't have x-rays because I think I'm pregnant. <gasps> oh. She says, you think you're pregnant? I then explain how I threw up in the bushes and I usually have a pretty strong stomach. She shrugs and we skip the x-rays. <laughs> I call my husband as soon as I leave and tell him about it. He picks up a test on the way home and you guessed it, murderino bambino on the way. Yay! Thank you for making me sick enough to figure out I was pregnant. Your friend in the bay, Shay. Shay, you have to <laughs> name that baby typhoid, typhoid Mary. Or x-ray. <laughs> typhoid Mary would be such a cute name. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we saved that baby from x-ray. That's uh, right. Ray, x-ray rays. With our gross x -rays. imagery. <laughs> You're welcome, <clears throat> baby Mary. Uh, that's so touching. I know. Because I, th I absolutely thought it was going to go into I had food poisoning. I did totally did too. Right? <laughs> yes. And maybe part of me wanted it to be that. Where maybe it's like, well, like, this will be fun. Now let's tell food poisoning stories. Food They're poisoning my story. favorite. I do too because I've never had it. You haven't? I don't think I've, I've, I've gotten sick before from food, but I don't think I've ever had like legit food poisoning. I've only had it twice. And the most recent time, uh, uh, let me just be a little gross for one second. Kay. So if you think you might be pregnant, pull over. Because, but it's not that gross. <laughs> what if people are just like, I'm, I might be pregnant, but I'm not going to, they just pull over all these <laughs> pregnant people. It's just everyone off the freeway. Yeah. Um, I was eating dinner at Casitas del Campo, which is this awesome um, like Mexican restaurant best. in LA yeah. in uh, on Hyperion. And, and they do amazing shows downstairs, which is where, and of course I've talked at length about it. Um, Golden Girls Live takes place. But up Upstairs is this old school Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. so, so I was good. sitting there with, I believe it was um, Chip Pope, my friend Chip Pope. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of this dinner, I start farting <laughs> in a way that, like, it's quiet and stuff. Only I know it's happening. Oh, my God. But the first one, I, I almost laughed because I was like, wow, that was a yeah, lot. Like a public fart. It's but like then it keeps happening. <laughs> for the rest of the dinner it kept, oh my god like and it was like really long drawn out where i was like i don't think i've ever experienced this before it's like more farting than not farting oh my god and then i went home and 
began the worst bout of food poisoning that I'd ever experienced to the point where I almost thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. I have to say that it wasn't from Casita del Campo because no, 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 it no. takes like 24 to 48 hours for whatever you ate to give you food poisoning. And in fact, in doing that math, it is a business that's now shut down. Remember those fresh and easy grocery stores that used to be all yeah. over LA? Oh yeah, they're like weird shrimp salads and stuff. Yes, I got a Chinese chicken salad oh my and God. It, when I did the math, I was like, it was that cabbage filled Chinese chicken salad oh. and I haven't been able to eat anything with cabbage in it since good because it was so horrible I wouldn't either I'm not going to either that was one of the grosser stories I could have told it was just a farting story but I mean those you know when you have food poisoning because the farting s- approach and style <laughs> Is unlike anything. <laughs> like if you are sitting anywhere and the farting becomes long, uh-huh. long and powerful, get it, get indoors, <laughs> get to a bathroom. I mean, if a fart ever surprises me, <laughs> of all fucking people, something is truly wrong with my gastrointestinal, <laughs> more so than it already is. Because okay, go. We we really kicked this one off. Well, here we go. Hello. It can only go everybody. uphill from here. Um, Okay, let's see. We'll start with this one. Uh, Hometown story, piano teacher nefariousness. Mm -hmm. Never trust a piano teacher. I mean, this one is. Dear Karen Georgia Stephen Stephen, and that's Stephen spelled both ways. Um, (laughs) I grew up in a small town bordering the Jersey Shore, parentheses, I apologize on behalf of all Italian Americans from New Jersey for anything annoying we have ever done ever. (laughs) Close parentheses. When I was a kid, my mom brought me to music lessons, arts and crafts, and other extracurricular activities to encourage the creative side of my child brain. Unfortunately, one of these good-hearted gestures was bringing me to a piano lesson with a creepy old pedophile. Oh, no. For a while, I was taking piano and guitar lessons from a nice lady who lived with her father, who also taught piano, and oftentimes stopped in uh, during the lesson and exchanged small talk with me or my mom. He was nice, but kind of strange. He had a wandering eye and would wear one of those ties that had piano keys all the way down. <laughs> down it <laughs> not saying these ties make you a pervert but come on <laughs> <laughs> they don't make you a pervert they're just so corny they're yeah it's, there's a lot of corn one day while i was in my super oh while i was in my lesson sorry the father was chatting with my mom and showed her the series of superimposed photographs of children uh, who were other students photoshopped into random scenes like Uh-oh. a girl in the middle of a safari or a boy coming out of a shark's mouth Uh-oh. my mom was like oh ha ha cool but in her head was like what the fuck <laughs> She did not want to diss the old man. He probably worked very diligently on the computer. He then told my mother that he could make a cool edited pic of her daughter. I knew where this was going. Can I take a photo of your daughter? Mm -hmm. If she provided a photograph of then 12-year-old me. My mom kindly but firmly responded, no thank you. And he never asked again. Fast forward a couple months later, my piano teacher canceled our lessons out of nowhere due to a family emergency Uh with her father. My mom sent her condolences and she assumed he just died or was very sick. A week or so later on a warm summer day, my mom was washing the dishes and watching the news Uh -uh. when the old man's mugshot appeared on the TV. (gasps) My mom screamed so loud and for so long that my dad had to go shut the window. (laughs) Turns out contractors were renovating the piano teacher's bathroom and noticed some unusual wiring, red flag, called the cops and nearly had a heart attack oh and ripped out the walls and discovered a video camera recording system my oh mother my nearly God. had a heart attack as she realized both of us had for sure used that bathroom and all the students that were victims to his gross picture collages or home videos the piano teacher later told my mom we might be called to testify but we never were truly disturbing shout out to any contractors that see suspicious things and speak up yeah. I can't imagine how many fucked up things they discovered during renovations because of them this pervert will hopefully spend his last days in jail bye thanks for making this amazing podcast i listen all the time for perspective and to remind myself of my mom saying don't trust anyone with two holes in their nose (laughs) stay sexy (laughs) and especially don't trust anyone with a piano tie alexandra oh my god the piano teacher thing or the like uh, when you go to someone's house and there someone lives with them yeah they're like you know what I mean yeah isn't that from the what was that show we love the family wasn't the pedophile's mom in it uh, a piano teacher 
with the family which one is that that was the one in the very beginning of the podcast we were really into where the son got kidnapped as a young kid and then came back oh yes but it turned out he wasn't really a pedophile that was just he was the one that had been accused of the murder of the son and then when the son came back he was no he was a pedophile in addition to that though oh it was Andrew McCarthy, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. He was yes. a pedophile. He had gotten out of prison. So he was like back. innocent and guilty at the same time. Yeah. So they thought he had something to... Yeah. It's a, it's a good show. That it's was a good, good show. show. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see here. I read that one already. This one. Okay. This one's called... This one's funny. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to tell you the name of it till after because it's a clever name, but it gives it away. Okay. All right. Dear Georgia, Karen, and the MFM crew... About 20 years ago, the museum I worked at was offered some old coffins that had been unearthed during a street construction project. This is a colonial era city with a long history of relocating old churchyards to make room for urban growth. But as many horror movies teach us, graves are often left behind in the process. That's right. Our city workers are so accustomed to finding historic burials, they sometimes just leave them in place and build over them. Where do you think this is? I'm not going there. These burials. <laughs> They're about to explain the the um, the movie a Poltergeist to yeah. us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that was the valley. So anyway, this you family know, colonial moves into a house. San Fernando Valley, <laughs> <laughs> historic colonial. Okay, the yeah, this family is building a pool, the swimming pool. Craig T. Nelson's there. Um, these burials were near the site of an old Civil War hospital, so a local historical society had them exhumed and moved to a university for further study. As it turns out, they were just regular folk men, women, and a few children who were buried in a long-forgotten cemetery from the 1830s. Mm. The curator and I viewed the remains, which which the archaeologists had placed in coffin-sized cardboard boxes. Most were just jumbled bones with some broken wood, broken coffin wood mixed in, but two were fairly intact, including one with a full head of hair still covered by a woolen uh, grave blanket. Ooh. Oh. So as I was looking at these remains, I kept noticing weird fluffy stuff mixed with these bones. Uh, it looked like plant roots or clumps of dried up grass or something. These clumps tended to be nestled near the middle of each body around the pelvis. I couldn't figure out what it was. Then I saw it. The most well-preserved body, right below the grave blanket covering her midsection, I saw the biggest, all caps, bush I had ever laid <laughs> eyes on. <laughs> yes, I'm talking about pubic hair. On a skeleton. See, what? the fluffy clumps I'd seen in every coffin was pubic hair that had resisted decay for more than 150 years. Fun fact, they don't fucking, they don't teach you this shit. You never hear about this. Fun fact, all, after all the soft bits rot away, the harder bits, including cartilage, nails, and body hair can remain behind, stuck to the bones. <laughs> Think about that next time you stroll in a cemetery. <laughs> now, I'm not a pube, sh- I'm not pube shaming anybody here because <laughs> waxing and trimming is a personal choice and these 19th century people never heard of such things as a bikini wax but there is something and this is in uh s- stars asterisk mm-hmm. extremely unsettling about <laughs> seeing giant gnarly and totally untamed bush on exhumed skeletons <laughs> Up to that point in the visit, I was feeling okay, but once I realized what I was looking at, I had a swoony moment where I couldn't decide whether to, I would vomit or faint. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't either. I also kept my mouth shut, figuring the curator didn't want to hear me freak out about dead people's pubes. Probably. The bodies I saw were eventually reburied respectfully in a beautiful historic cemetery in the city, pubes and all. Uh, but the museum never did take the coffin since they were too moldy and gross and filled with those loose pubes from long dead Irish immigrants. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> she, she pointed, pointed at right you. at me. I'm an Irish immigrant. <laughs> you know you're, you and your hairy bush. We know how we are. That's so, part of our charm. I learned a few things from this experience. First, I'm far, far more squeamish than I thought I was. I love true crime stories with the sight of real dead bodies, especially skeletons with ro- robust growths of pubic hair, disturb me deeply. Secondly, cremation seems so much better than lying around underground moldering away for decades. I love a cemetery stroll, but I really don't want to end up decaying in one. Finally, if you're into waxing or trimming, always make sure you look your best. You might end up on display in a university <laughs> anthropology lab in 180 years. Will. <laughs> it is like so... I think that's the same thing with like when you see nails or teeth on a... You know, when you see like a skull... And there's teeth in it. And yeah. then you can see that they had braces or denture. Like you, you can see what the f- human, the person's face looked like with those teeth. Yeah. And it makes it so much more real than yeah. without. Yeah. I guess pubics, like, or like nails. If you can see like painted toenails on a skeleton, you'd be like, <laughs> oh my God, this person like 
did these things. So they painted their nails so much it went down to the bone. (laughs) Yeah. Just that that, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, no. It just like makes it real. Well, and also it's hilarious because I have never thought about this once. And then as you were describing that, probably because of the, you know, Irish immigrant stuff you were saying, but I really did picture almost like a pink bush. (laughs) <laughs> like, why? Like they, I don't know that it would get, like that something would catch that person's eye yeah. and then just be like what oh, the wait fuck is a this minute. now you have to rethink the whole movie the mummy yeah and you have to think about what kind of dye they use to make their bush pink guys we've got pubes we've got farts lots we've of vomit got talk. vomiting this is this is the last one I think this is it no you have two more uh, I do have two more which means you have one more right I can do one more um or I could just do this one last one. It's kind of long. And the subject line is. Oh, wait, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. This okay. was called Pubes from the Crypt. <laughs> 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 Even though we never t- name the minisodes, this should be like the junior high special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see for this one the subject line is absolutely bonkers beef stroganoff story oh we talked about beef stroganoff in pockets okay Um, greetings MFM fam I've been tempted to write many a time one of my childhood friends murdered another a boy whose locker was near mine killed a woman in Florida and I once spent a week at a conference with Robert Durst what the fuck shit you better write back but it is Karen's mention of beef stroganoff in minisode 80 (laughs) that finally compels me to write my dad only recently shared the story with me and I make him tell it to everyone because it's just so beyond yes. here it is yeah love parent stories right uh also later life parent stories yeah. things they didn't tell you totally. when you were a kid. it's the late 60s my dad is 18 and the weekend of my aunt's it's the weekend of my aunt's wedding my great uncle owned a nearby restaurant and offered to make the rehearsal dinner mm. for the wedding party their families and the priest up at our family summer house about 20 miles away he made you guessed it be stroke off <laughs> Before I go any further, I need to tell you a little bit about my great uncle so that you can truly appreciate and picture what comes next. He was a great big man, 400 pounds, <gasps> and he apparently had an even larger personality. He wouldn't, he couldn't go anywhere without being stopped. He knew everyone oh. and everyone loved him. Love it. He was also a drinker who liked shiny things like the ginormous and not at all inconspicuous mint green Cadillac that he bought yes. just before all of this happened. Oh no. Ugh. You know that thing because it's, uh, the late 60s. Yeah. So a, ma- a mint green Cadillac from the late 60s. Flashy. Hi. Is, this, um, is beef stroganoff going to end up all over it? Well, let's find out. Okay. And then next word in this is onward. <laughs> it's the night of the rehearsal and everyone is at the church. My dad and the groom's father slipped out early and headed to the lake house to make sure everything was set for the dinner. About halfway there, they approached a church whose sign advertised a potluck supper and noticed cars lined up and down both sides of the road that in and of itself wasn't strange but the fact that they were all dinged and dented and scratched up with tiny with shiny mint green paint (gasps) was my dad and the groom's father knew exactly what had happened and hightailed it out of there when they reached the house their fears were confirmed there was my great uncle's mint green cadillac precariously parked sideways in front of the house with the engine still running and in the house was my great uncle passed out and snoring on the couch they ran into the kitchen where there was no no beef stroganoff to be found and immediately realized what they were looking f- they were looking for it in the wrong place they went back down to the car opened the door and were greeted with a sight that can only be described as a crime scene of e- epic proportions the entire white interior of his brand new catalog cadillac was all caps absolutely covered in beef stroganoff <laughs> It was in the glove box. It was dripping from the ceiling. It was oh, everywhere. Oh, my God. And the guests were due to arrive any minute. So my dad and the groom's dad no. did the only thing no. they could to salvage the evening. They got spatulas and Woo! scraped the beef stroking off back into the box. <laughs> then they climbed into the Cadillac and drove it up into the woods to hide it. Oh, my God. Once the car was safely hidden away, they calmly went back in the house, cleaned themselves and my great uncle up, waited for the guests to arrive. And when they did, they served him up that beef stroking up like nothing happened. XO and SSDGM, Kate. Oh, my God. Uh, I just love it. Like, these are the days when you could be an alcoholic and and it was hilarious. That's right. troubling. Now it would be like every, you know, if he hit eight cars, that's eight lawsuits. Yeah all the people that ate that scooped up food oh, they would sue them too totally <laughs> imagine just the little things that would yeah. be in that beef stroganoff from the car 
Ew, it was new. But the good news, it was new. But, the, oh, but just still. little fibers, little fibers, fibers. and stuff. Like picking stuff out of your teeth. <laughs> fibers, maybe a random hair or two. Um... <laughs> With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie-smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Craft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80 it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80 Go bye. Should we do one more? Sure. Okay. Do you have one to end on? I have one I can do. Do it. Okay. This is called Respiratory Therapist. Hi, my mom is a registered respiratory therapist in Las Vegas. <laughs> hi. Brad, Brad. Just, yeah. Look, hi. Hi. She went back to school at the age of 48 and got her degree while raising my sister and I on her own. She's kind of my hero. Anyways, <laughs> after she earned her degree, we had to move from Las Vegas to a college town in the Midwest. The town only had about 10,000 people in it, excluding the large number of students. But I'm just trying to paint the picture of how fucking small this place was compared to Las Vegas, where I grew up. <laughs> fair, okay. Fair enough. God. Since the city was so tiny, the hospital only had less than 175 beds. In a facility so small, everyone took care of all the patients. But one of my one of the first nights my mom started working there, she had to do what is called, in medical terms, a terminal extubation extubation or what we commonly known as pulling the plug mm. extubation extubation take, right that sucks that's horrible a terminal extubate i'd never heard that before she was uh, she had never taken someone off life support before and she was understandably shaking shaken reading about the procedure is different from doing it you know so she was so she held back tears as she quickly and methodically disconnected the woman who was like 80 or something i don't know but she lived a full life <laughs> and left the room so that the family could grieve the loss she went into a supply room and shut the door just in time to cry her eyes out it oh. was the first time she had literally ended a life after about 10 minutes and regaining her composure for the rest of the work night, my mom opened the door and all but tripped over the patient she had just con- disconnected from the ventilator. <laughs> In those 10 minutes that my mom had gone into the supply room to be alone, her patient started breathing on her own again and even regained consciousness for the first time in over a month. What? The, they even had a conversation right there in the hall as the patient was being taken home by her family. What? My mom has since had to perform other other terminal extubations, but her first is the one that she will never forget. <laughs> Thought you would all like, like this story now that we're talking about almost any crazy thing. <laughs> we think that you will all enjoy. <laughs> That's true. Thank you for all the hard work that you put into this podcast. It gets me through my work days in a construction company, mostly consisting of men. They once even had a bet as to what I was listening to. They thought I was Katy Perry, and I had to admit to three grown men that no, I am not a firework. I am a murderino. Yay! <laughs> Karen, thank you especially for talking about alcoholism so candidly. It helps me talk to my dad about his own. Oh, we were just talking about that. Wow, yeah. Much love, Brianna. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> here's what I here's what I love. And I'm sure it's collapsed timeline, but like the idea of like, well, we better unplug her. Goodbye. Cry, cry, cry. Mm-hmm. Pull the tube out. Hey, what's up? Are you awake? All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah. like, Ten minutes. She's in the she hallway. Can she can get out of here. I, you know what? Pull a doctor into that decision making process. Yeah, we thought this would last five minutes. You got it. You don't have any more time on the clock here, honey. We only have 175 beds. They're like, we want to get her home. We want to ha- celebrate. We're going to do Christmas in July. Let's get this taken <laughs> care of. That's right. Um, all right. Wow. That was a great one. We really dug in. Yeah. 
Um, okay. We got to the heart of the matter. It was a lot of physical, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of human experience. Yeah. Lots of gross stuff. Yeah. You know. Which is the good stuff. Right. Right. S- uh, send us your weird, gross stuff. Maybe we'll do another junior high episode at some point. <laughs> or whatever. Um, or th- just whatever. Yeah. Thanks for or my favorite murder. Gmail is where you send it. Thanks for listening, you guys. And stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Noise. Oh, where's that guy? Elvis. Want a cookie? Ah, good boy.